Hey, what's up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today we're talking about the Smashing Pumpkins and their new album, Seer, via Sumerian Records. And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. So the Smashing Pumpkins formed back in 1988 in my old stomping grounds of Chicago, Illinois, hitting the alternative rock scene hard with Gish in 1991. Later becoming a household name with Siamese Dream in 1993 after dropping classic singles like Today and Disarm. The band went on to release 10 studio albums with increasing success, initially disbanding after 2000's Machina, but reforming again for 2007's Zeitgeist, dropping a few more releases with varying lineups but always led by frontman and songwriter Billy Corgan. And now it's time for album number 11. Now, some of you may be asking why this metal channel is reviewing this very non-metal album. For one, I'm a longtime fan, and if you're aware of legendary tracks like Zero, Bullet for Butterfly Wings, and Bodies, this crew has always dabbled in heaviness. But I guess more than anything, what intrigued me the most about Seer, after years of mostly disinterest with their post-reform discography, was seeing that this was being released by Sumerian Records, formerly most known for bands like Born of Osiris. This isn't too much of a surprise given the label broadened sonic trajectory over the last few years, even dropping Poppy's latest album earlier this year, but this has to be one of their most high-profile acts to date. Now, all of that said, Seer is very much on the lighter side of their discography, so don't expect any of the label's metal history to rub off on them in any way like I was wondering. Rather, I'd compare this album most closely to 1998's Adore with its heavy focus on electronica and synth-pop sensibilities. The music video for the title track even sports a similar aesthetic with the leather-clad goth chic of that era, and a composition that would probably be just as much at home on a The Cure record. And despite or perhaps because of not being like anything else I have been listening to this year, this track in particular was the hook that really sold me on giving the album a listen. Like it or not, you can't deny its catchiness. So does the rest of the album live up to that same high bar? Personally, I don't really feel like that's the case. At 20 tracks stretching over an hour and 12 minutes, it feels pretty bloated and while never straying from being enjoyable, rarely hits the same high level of engagement. Most of these tracks felt pretty forgettable, especially within the larger context of the band's early discography. Lots of drifting, atmospheric tracks that served as decent background music, but not much else. That said, there are a few standouts here and there. Nearly halfway through the track listing of this daydream of a record, which nearly knocked me off my feet with its sudden eruption of groovy bass distortion and chugging guitars. Another very catchy track still tinged with moody synth, but perhaps the closest thing to straight up rock and roll you can expect. Purple Blood and Save Your Tears are also decent, the latter sporting a pretty infectious bass part, upbeat backing vocals, and sparkling synth arrangements that make me feel like I'm in some sort of enchanted forest. But again, that's largely the album as a whole, with not a lot of variety to speak of. Unlike, say, the new Greg Puchato solo effort, there's a severe lack of ups and downs to really differentiate and flesh out each track on an individual basis. So I feel like in the end, feelings about this album are going to be pretty split, so take my own subjective perspective with a grain of salt. If you're an avid listener of synth pop and bands like The Cure, you'll probably really love what Seer has to offer. But if you're more like me and prefer a little more alternations between these lighter, more electronically driven tracks and the heavier rock anthems of their 90s discography, you may find yourself a little bored. Don't get me wrong, I love their softer stuff. 1979 is my favorite song of all time, but that track was immediately sandwiched between Bullet for Butterfly Wings, Tonight Tonight, and Zero. God damn, that was a great album. But as far as my tastes are concerned, I give Seer a 7 for enjoyability. It was a solid listen, but aside from the singles, I wouldn't really mind if I never heard it again. 
I give it an 8 for musicianship. The compositions are well arranged, albeit often a little generic sounding, and lacking in those magical hooks the band is so capable of. And on a similar note, I give it a 7 for innovation. Nothing particularly new or exciting going on here, either as a band or within the pantheon of electronic music as a whole. Even if that is your cup of tea, I can think of dozens of other albums in that style that I'd recommend to you over this one. So a 7.3 overall and a C for The Smashing Pumpkins and Seer. Get it again via Sumerian Records. Y'all, thanks as always for watching, and again, I've got plenty of metal reviews, album tier lists, and interviews with bands on the podcast, so plenty of reasons to subscribe if you have not already. Also, like and comment with your own thoughts below. Did you like this album? What's your favorite Smashing Pumpkins album of all time? Let's get a conversation going. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.